So for the last week or so, I have been using Nano. Now, I am a longtime Vim user, as I stated in the challenge video, which you can watch in the cards linked above or in the video description. And I love Vim. I'm a longtime proponent and elitist when it comes to my usage of Vim. So switching to Nano has been, it has been a challenge. I don't want to give away too much on my thoughts on Nano today because I'm still only a week into the challenge. And if you were to ask me my thoughts on Nano right now, they'd be somewhere along the lines of, Grr. you know, that would be my thoughts on Nano right now. This has not been a very productive week when it comes to actually me doing work. And that has been very, very frustrating. But again, I don't want to review Nano because I don't have much positive to say about it yet. And I'm hoping that by using it another three weeks, I can at least find something good to say about it. But... We're not there yet. So what I wanted to do today was talk about the nano configuration file. Now, I know what you're thinking, Matt. You can configure nano? I had no clue this was even possible. Well, it is actually possible. And there are a ton of different things you can do inside of the nano configuration file, which are fairly neat and fairly comprehensive and way more expansive, actually, than I would even have thought was possible. So today, what I'm going to do is take you through the nano configuration file talk about some of the things that I've changed, uh, which is still fairly surface level, honestly. And then uh, we'll talk about the overall customizability of Nano. So let's go ahead and jump in. So this is the Nano RC file. Now, if you want to find out where this is by default, you'll have to go to either slash Etsy slash Nano RC, which is where it lives by default, or you can run this command here and put it in your home directory. That's what I've done simply because I don't want to have to run root every time I want to make a change. So I've run this command here. I've put the nano RC in my home directory, and that's what you're looking at here. Now, the one thing I will give it super credit for is that they've done a good job when it comes to making sure you know exactly what each of these options allow you to do. So they have really good commenting here, which is very nice. And they haven't gone overboard, so it's not like the kitty configuration file, which I showed you in another video where they have basically put the entire documentation inside of the configuration file. Here with the, the nano RC file, basically they've just given you a couple lines of what the command or the setting does, and they moved on with their lives. That's very, very good. Now the basic way the configuration file is set up is that at the top of the file you have your basic options for nano. And that goes on for about 250 lines or so. After that, after about the 250th line or so, you're going to get into key bindings, which I consider actually more important than all the rest, because the default configuration key bindings for Nano are mostly garbage. So I've made some changes here. So these, these are the first changes that I'll go over. So I've changed bindings for exit and save, and I've wanted to make sure that those are default. Now, some of these are the way they are by default anyways, but I wanted to make sure they were hard-coded for changes for me. I've changed the search key from control F to control slash, which is more of a Vim binding, although not really. I haven't really decided whether or not I like that or not. I'm still kind of getting used to it. I also changed the find next key binding so that it's control N instead of, I think it's control G by default. I'm not actually sure what it was before, but I wanted to, again, be closer to what it is in Vim. And then I've ma made sure that the Z and Y do the undo and redo, which I think is actually default, but again, I'm not sure. I, I just uncommented them so that that's the way they are. So those are the changes that I've made in terms of key bindings. The good news is that everything is changeable when it comes to key bindings, because like I said, the default ones I don't really care for. Some of them are fine. I'm not a big fan of control X and stuff like that. So I've changed everything to control Q in order to quit. So I've done that. And there are some other ones here for more complex key bindings that allow you to edit those. I haven't done anything with those. So th those have all just left the same. So those are the key bindings. And like I said, you can make changes to all of those, which is good. I was surprised that that existed. I was surprised that the configuration file existed. So I, you can't be all that surprised that I was surprised that this existed. It's like midnight. I, I can't. <laughs> Words are really hard right now. So just forgive me. Anyways, we're going to go back to the top here and we'll go through some of the things that I've changed. So I've changed this one here to be uncommented. Basically what this does is that it will 
make sure that words wrap at faces instead of between words, which is really weird. One of the stupidest things that Nano does is by default, when you get to the end of the line, it just continues on forever and ever and in, into infinity and beyond. <laughs> so that's just the default way it does it. And I can't stand that because no Nano, no text editor in the world should ever, that, that's not useful for anyone ever. It should be, it should have some kind of wrap by default, but it doesn't. Instead, you have to set up soft wrap, which is another one that I've changed down here somewhere. Unfortunately, the, the biggest problem I have with the nano configuration file is honestly that the things aren't together, right? So you have things dealing with wrap and stuff like that up here, and then you have more wrap options down here if you can find them. And that's actually right here around line 150. So you can see that those two lines, which really should go together, which is quite far apart from each other, you know, so that's not great. And there's a lot of that stuff here where, you know, some things where you think would go together are kind of actually fall far apart. So I'm not sure ex exactly how they've decided to organize this. It feels like they've kind of added them as they created them sometimes, which is not a, it's not great for figuring things out, shall we say. So I've changed this to set soft wrap so that the words do not go off on a, a line into infinity. I want them to, to wrap like this. The only problem, of course, when you have this set is that when you copy this, so if I were to copy some of this stuff and then paste it literally anywhere else, the formatting is really weird. Like it, it sets it up into columns for some reason and it's, it, it, it feels like it's not full lines. So copying stuff from Nano, even if you're copying stuff like into a buffer from like outside of you, outside of Nano using like Xclip, still cop it copies them really, really weird. The best example I have of this is on my Patreon and I'm going to show you guys an early access to a blog post so you guys are going to see this. So this this is what I'm talking about. See how these lines are really, really short? It should go all the way over here, but it doesn't. <laughs> Instead, it looks like this, and this was copied from Nano. So that's not, that's not great. <laughs> uh, so copying stuff from Nano is really weird, and that's because of that soft wrap option. So yeah, don't really care for that. I'm not sure if there's a way to, to fix that or not. Another one that I've changed is this set position log. And unfortunately, it doesn't work. What it, this is supposed to do is when you save a file, it's supposed to then return you to that position when you return to it, but it doesn't work. So if I hit save here and then, you know, exit out of this and then go back, it should actually it worked that time. It's very inconsistent because the last time I tried it, it didn't work. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe I'm just doing something wrong, which is always possible. Another thing that I've changed, which I'm not going to try to find here actually, is I've added line numbers. So if I hit control uh, slash, which is my search function, I'll, I'll do line, see if I can find the, the line option. Turns out lines is a really popular word. So the set line number options is actually right here. So I've set that as well. Basically, those are the only changes that I've made so far other than the UI. So I've added the line numbers, but I've removed the really stupid, fairly useless title bar that goes along Nano by default. And that's done by, let's see if I can find it. Okay, so this this line here, set mini bar, basically what that does is it suppresses the title bar, so it makes that go away. And then it shows the file name plus the cursor position in the bottom bar. So the top bar of Nano, as far as I'm aware, all it does is show the word Nano and then the version of Nano. I've removed that. That's another thing that I've changed. And I've removed the help along the bottom. So by default, if you've ever used Nano before, you'll know that the bottom of the screen is taken up by keybinding tips for you. If you need to learn how to, you know, exit Nano or save a file or whatever, it, it tells you how to do that with some tips along the bottom. I wanted that gone, so I got that gone by setting this option here. Uh, now, let's talk about some of the things that I haven't changed yet. So honestly, the biggest surprise that I've had with Nano so far, other than the weird pasting outside of Nano, is the number of options that it actually has. So you can change how Nano functions in many different ways. So you can change it so that the control write and control delete key bindings change from the beginning to the end of words. So you can choose how that works. You can set up an auto indent. You can set up a backup file so that it back up, backs up. I'm not sure how that functionality works. I haven't looked it up yet, but if it's anything like Vim, basically what Vim does is that it backs up periodically to a buffer. And then if you were to 
quit accidentally or whatever, you could theoretically get your, your text back or at least some of it back. So I'm assuming maybe it works a little bit like that if you have it set up properly, but it doesn't look like it's set up by default. You can change how Nano does searches so that it's case sensitive by default or not case sensitive by de default. There's several options for displaying information in the status bar, which is the bar there along the bottom. And then there's a lot of options for how the cursor functions as well. So it, not only the cursor, but how commands that are based on where the cursor is, how those commands work. The cut from cursor is one, one such option, and there are several others as well. If you wanted a scroll bar, you could set a scroll bar. You can set it so that instead of scrolling per line, it can will scroll by half screen, which is basically like a page jump. You can obviously set line numbers, which I've shown you. There are several options for how the mouse functions inside of Nano as well. So if you wanted to change how the mouse functions inside of Nano, you can do that. I've not changed any of those because I'm not using the mouse. I refuse to do that. As you can see, there is another option here for how searches act. This is another example of how oddly they have options inside of the nano configuration file because there was a there is an option for search like in on line like 10 or 12 or something like that. And here we are on, on line 133 and there's another one, right? And then there's another one even below this. So the one, the real big criticism I have of nano in terms of the configuration file is that the it's not well organized, right? It's all over the place. So there's search options, you know, here, here and here all the way throughout. They're not together like you'd expect and it makes things hard to find and really makes you kind of forces you to go through the whole damn thing technically nano does have a spell check and i've uncommented this line but i have not gotten it to work yet so i'm not sure exactly what you know how it works i haven't honestly tried all that hard to do it yet but supposedly there is a spell check here somewhere i'm not sure how that actually works uh, as i said and it does allow you, for those of you who are interested in changing the number of spaces a tab is constituted as, you can change that as well. They, they do seem to have grouped the two options for tabs here together, which is nice. And then finally, we get into the colors. So by default, the colors are as such as they are. They don't really inherit anything from your terminal color scheme at all. So... You know, that, that's something you won't be able to get done unless you do it explicitly. And if you want syntax highlighting, you have to install like a plugin in order to do that. I have not done that yet because I didn't really care to do so. But you can get syntax highlighting in Nano if you want. Other than that, there are certain things here in terms of colors that you can change. The one thing that I will say is that I don't really, I don't think I changed any of these. I think they're all default. default. I just went through and uncommented them because I wanted to make some changes. I think the times that I've tried try to change something, it didn't really go through, so I was probably doing something wrong or it was pulling from something different, I don't know. But if you wanted to change colors inside of Nano, this is how you do it. So I didn't go through this line by line. That would have taken quite a while. But if you are a Nano user and you didn't know that there was a Nano configuration file, now you know. If you did know that there was a nano configuration file, in the comment section below, I'd love to hear some of the options that you consider essential because maybe there's some options here that I haven't uncommented that would be really useful. So I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Links for LibrarPay and YouTube will be in the video description as well. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the chance will not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Seriously, guys. Just totally awesome. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.